Hey, and welcome back to the Counter-Strike 2 modding tutorial series. In this video, we're going to cover importing models into the Counter-Strike 2 tools. So, first you're going to need an FBX. So, I'm going to assume you already have one. If not, I'll do a quick demonstration of how to export one from Blender. So, in Blender, select the mesh, press N, and this will open the transform menu. I want you to zero out the X, Y, and Z of the model you're trying to export. Once that's done, all you need to do is go up to File, Export, FBX, and then export the file to somewhere that you want to store your files. Uh, make sure Selected Objects is selected, and this will ensure that only the model that you have selected is being exported, and then just export that to wherever. In this case, I'm going to export it to my desktop. Now, the Counter-Strike tools require you to put all models and textures and any assets you're importing into the engine inside the content folder. So to do this, you're going to want to go down to your file browser and quickly grab the model that you've just exported. So in my case, it's on my desktop. I'm going to grab it and control C. Then you're going to need to find your content folder. So easy way of doing this is just going to Steam right-clicking on your Counter-Strike installation, hitting Properties, going to Installed Files, and then hitting Browse. And inside here, you'll notice a content folder. Double-click it. And then from here, you're going to need to go into CSGO Add-ons. This will probably get changed to CS2 Add-ons, I imagine, in the near future, but open it. And then you're going to have to open the add-on that you've created through the launcher. In this case, for me, it's going to be detesting. Now, in here, if you just created the add-on, there should be nothing other than a maps, post-process, sound events, and sounds folder. I have created all the other folders in here. I recommend you create a raw models folder and a models folder. Inside the raw models folder will go your FBX files. So in this case, my police barrier. And then inside your models folder will be the compiled models, but this will be set up inside the engine. Now, with your FBX inside the content folder, we can head down into the tools. So we're gonna head down here and hop into the asset browser when the tools open. From here, you're gonna to wanna to go up to your tools bar, tools, and choose the model doc editor. This is where all model editing takes place. From here, you're gonna to wanna to head down to the create new section and click on this model, generic model document. Double click it, and it'll open up this window. This is the model doc editor. This is where we set up everything from basic materials, collision, and other more complex things that we won't be getting into today. So from here, you're gonna wanna hit the star, add meshes, and it, sh it probably won't bring you to the raw models folder. It's probably just because I've been in there, but you're gonna wanna find your raw models folder and inside, select the mesh that you're trying to import. Press open, and you'll notice not much changed other than this orange bar. All that means is it needs to be compiled. So you'll see this needs compiling button down here on the right side. Click it, and suddenly it'll bring up another pop-up. This is your compiled model. So this is the one we're going to be putting the models folder. So select the models folder, name it whatever you want the model to be named, and press save. It'll compile the model. You'll notice it's this obnoxious red checker texture. To fix that, we're just going to need to add a material group. So go up here, press add, and type material. A lot will pop up here, but you'll see default material group somewhere in there. Click it, and press OK. Once again, we're going to need to compile. Press compile. Nothing changes at first, but if you go to the default material group in the inspector on the left side here that you just created, go here, and go to the right a little bit and go up to open local browser. This will bring up a texture browser. If you've already created textures for your model, you can choose them here. In the meantime, I'm just going to choose a dev texture to apply. So double click it and compile once again and your textures should show up. The last thing we're going to need for most models is collision. So once again, you're going to hit add and type physics. And in here, you'll see physics hull file. Click it and press OK. 
it's going to ask for an FBX. If you've made a standalone collision model for your model, select that. If not, just select the base model file we imported earlier. And it'll create a very varying collision model, depending on your model. This is quite obnoxious and wouldn't work too well in game. Press compile. Now, depending on your model, it might work fine. In this case, it's wrapped around it in a very obnoxiously large shape. To fix that though, in my case, I can just go down here to the import mode and change that to hell for element. I'm not gonna get into all these settings right here, but you're gonna have to tweak these chances are to get your collision looking like you want it. In this case, the hull per element works because I've modeled this as separate boxes, so it treats everything as a separate collision model. Compile, and it's up and running. And that's all you need. If you go back to your tools menu and open Hammer, if everything's gone well, you should be able to bring your model into a map. So just go to the Models tab down here, search it up should just be able to drag and drop your model. And you're good to go. I hope this was helpful and somewhat to the point. If you have any questions, though, feel free to ask them in the comments. And I'll be sure to answer them. And if it's big enough of a mistake, I'll fix it in the, the video. I'll see you in the next video.